Welcome everyone and thank you for joining this Evolve 365 Microsoft Tips and Tricks session for today. Uh, so we started this series to give you simple and easy tips that anyone can go back to their desk and quickly implement. We know your time is valuable, so we strive to keep these sessions to right around 30 minutes. My name is Christy Wine and I'm an Evolve 365 learning strategist with Planet Technologies. If you do have any questions after the session, please feel free to give me a call or send me a quick email and I'd be happy to answer any questions that you may have um, regarding anything that I'm going over today. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. This week we are going to be focusing on Microsoft Teams. So Microsoft Teams is a communication and collaboration platform uh, that combines basically everything, chat, video, meetings, file storage, collaboration on files, and application integration. So it's basically a one-stop shop for all your collaboration needs, really anything that you and your team might have to do uh, together, it's all right there in one place. So it's an amazing tool. Um, I really love it. I think, you know, it's awesome. And so today my goal is to kind of take you through the main aspects and do kind of a brief overview of all the main tools within Microsoft Teams. So I'm not necessarily doing a like a big deep dive into anything particular, but just um, an overview of it all. So let's start with what exactly is Microsoft Teams? So Teams is a great way to come together with your colleagues and clients, both inside and outside of your organization. So it's basically like a combination of Skype for Business, SharePoint Online, OneNote, and lots of other applications all in one, if that makes sense. So some great things about it are it provides a collaborative workspace for you and your team. It allows you to create multiple teams. So as you know, a lot of us have you know, a lot of things that we're a part of. So, you know, maybe we're a part of a lot of different things within our own company, or maybe we have a lot of customers outside of our company, but it allows you to make as many teams as you need to try to organize all these different aspects of your daily work life um, and, you know, separate it out so that you can concentrate on each um, team that you're involved in. You can organize teams so that all the communication can be in one place, so that includes your um, meetings, your chats, and your posts. So I'm going to get into exactly what those are in a little bit. And you can work with files together within the application. So you guys can all collaborate on files um, within Teams specifically. So when you open documents in Teams, it is going to take you to those online applications. So for example, if you're opening up a Word document, it would then take you to Word Online. So that's just something um, to note. And it also has great scheduling features. So Teams makes it super easy to schedule with a large group of people. Um, and once again, that can all take place within the same application. So first, I just want to give a brief overview of how to go about creating a team within Teams, because I keep talking about Teams. Um, so first, you're going to want to navigate to Teams, which is going to be on the side toolbar. So I'll show you that in just a second. Um, it allows you to create teams with a select group of individuals. And then you can always adjust who is a part of those teams. So you can add members, you can delete members. Um, it's extremely flexible. Um, within teams, you have something called channels. So channels within a team should be thought of as topics or work streams to aid the team in organizing their work to deliver on their joint objective. So, um, when you create a channel, you will get a default or general tab under your team. So that's something that you can use um, to share an overview of what the team is created for, um, maybe give a little background of the objective of why you're creating this team or what your goal is essentially with the team. Um, and this is great for new people being added to the team maybe. So if you add someone new, then they can get an idea of you know, what this team is for. So that would be in the general tab. And then you can have as many other channels as you want. So just kind of think about, you know, maybe you have a big project that you're doing um, with your team and there's a lot of different aspects of that project. So maybe you create a channel for each aspect of that project just to kind of organize your thoughts and files. Okay, so I want to go ahead and I want to jump in to our presentation. 
and show you what I'm talking about. So what we have is here on the right side, um, I'm calling this a toolbar in a sense. So you have all your different options of what you can click on. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and go to Teams. Oops, let's see. Okay, there we go. It wasn't loading for a second. So this is kind of a, um, a, a, a general feed of what's going on um, or what's included within that tab. And then here is where all the information lies in a sense or the activity within the tab. So as you can see, we have three teams. Um, so retail, mark eight, project team, sales and marketing team. Under each team, we have that general tab. Um, so that's, I'm sorry, by tab I meant channel. So we have a general channel under each of those. So once again, this is a great spot where you could incorporate some general information about why this team is created. And then you can create as many channels as you like. So, you know, this one is separated into a bunch of different channels. And so you can click on that and you can see that these conversations or posts are happening within that specific channel. With the team, you can click on this ellipses for more options and there's uh, many different options. So if we were to go to manage the team, we can see that there's owners and then there's members and guests. So the difference is that the members of a team, they cannot access or adjust the settings of the team, but they do have the ability to, you know, create posts, upload files, you know, do all of that sort of thing, but they cannot mess with the settings. So as an owner, you can change, you can see here, I can change this person from a member um, to an owner, if I'd like. I can, <clears throat> go to the channels tab. Um, I can see all the different channels within that specific team. Um, and I can highlight them to say maybe, you know, show for all members. I can see a description of the channel. And then I can also edit those channels. Um, then I can go to the settings. And so here's just, you know, a general brief overview, but there's all kinds of different settings that you can change. You can actually go in and change the member permissions. So you can tell um, the members what they have access to be able to do. Um, I like this tab. It has fun things like, do you want them to be able to upload gifts or stickers, that kind of thing, which is fun. So anyway, this is basically the team section, and then these are the channels that are included. Okay, so hopping back into our PowerPoint here, I know I'm kind of going a little bit quick, but we do, um, there's a lot of really cool features that I wanted to cover um, today. So wanted to talk about chats versus posts. So if you guys already are on Teams, you might have heard of conversations. So Teams is constantly evolving and constantly changing, just like all of our other Office 365 products. And one thing that just changed, literally, I think a couple of days ago, was that um, conversations are now called posts. And I actually think that's a great idea, because to me, chats and conversations it's kind of like the same word, just, you know, it's like a synonym. So I really like that they changed it to something a little bit more different so that you can tell the difference. So I want to talk to you about what is a chat and what is a post. So a chat, you're going to use the chat tab to connect with individuals. So this is a private conversation outside of a team. So has nothing to do with a team. Within these chats, you can start audio and video calls from the chat. And when I say another individual, you can have many people within your chat. You can add members to your chat, but it's just not included in a team or a channel. Where a team post, once again, used to be called conversations, this is specific to a team. So these posts can be viewed by everyone within the team. Um, posts have a reply function, and this is an awesome function because it really helps to organize ideas on a topic, or you can create a new post to start a new conversation about a different topic. Um, one thing to note, though, is that when you add new people or groups um, to a team, 
they can quickly get up to speed on things that have already been discussed because they can see the history um, of all of the previous posts. So that kind of does make it easy if you add someone, they can you know, kind of read up quickly on all the previous posts. So that's kind of a, a neat feature and they also have access to see all the files that have been uploaded and we're gonna get into files in a little bit. Okay, so once again, we're gonna go over to our side toolbar and hit chat. Here it'll have all of your recent chats. Here are some suggested people I could chat with. Um, but basically all you would have to do is click on the person and um, type your message. You have all of these options down below in terms of if you want to attach files, etc. If you want to start a new chat, you click this icon up here in the top right. You type the person's name that you would like to start a new chat with, and you simply start chatting. Um, so once again, like I said, it doesn't have to just be with one person. You can add other people to the chat. So all I do is hit add people with this little person icon over here. I can start typing in a name and then just simply hit add. So now there's three of us invited to the chat. And one thing that I do want to mention is, oops, so let me add one more person here. is that when you're adding these people, they, they may not see the previous messages that have been sent before. So you do wanna include them on what you're currently talking about. You can also start an audio call or you can start a video call from that chat. So say you're you know, talking with someone and you're like, let's just hop on a call. You can easily do that here. Okay, so now let me show you how the post works. So when you go within a team, you can go to a certain channel and so right here you can see let's go to monthly reports you can see it's called post so this used to be called conversations but it is the same thing so something that i do think was really neat is that if you want to start a new conversation about a different topic that hasn't been addressed before then you can simply type it down below but say that you know you're you want to comment on a topic that has previously been brought up. You can simply go to that topic, hit reply, type your message, or maybe there's an Excel sheet that is dealing with that specific topic. You can go in, attach a file, and hit, you know, upload from my computer or however you would like to upload the file and attach it there. And that way you're kind of keeping your conversations or your posts in one place and instead of having you know someone has to go through and read the past you know million posts to figure out where that one um, part of the conversation was so i think that's a really cool feature that can just like keep you organized in a sense okay so let's hop back into our powerpoint all right so now i want to talk a little bit about team files so with team files, you can create and edit documents with, right within Microsoft Teams. So whether that be with um, creating new folders, with Word, Excel, and PowerPoint, you can do all of that um, right in Teams. So this is a great opportunity to keep all of your files into one place. A lot of complaints that we've been hearing you know, before Teams were that, you know, I can't find my file, I don't know where it was saved, I lost it in my email. Um, because before people were sending files back and forth through email and it just kind of can become very confusing. Um, and then you don't often know if you have the most recent copy, um, maybe there are other edits and you can't figure out which copy is the correct one to look at. So Teams is a great way to keep everybody up to date and the files up to date and people to know what is the latest version of the file to be working on. So I think it's a really great feature um, so you can upload files within Teams, so you can simply drag and drop files into your team. Um, you can use the upload feature to browse for a document to search for it. Some other features you can use are, you know, get a link to your document or open the files library um, within SharePoint. Okay, so let me show you how the files tab works. So the files tab is on the bottom left here in the toolbar. 
So the default will be your recent files, as you can see right there. So that will just bring up files that you were most recently working with, which is a great feature. Um, you can then click on this Microsoft Teams icon right here, and it'll give you a list of the files, all the files that have been uploaded onto Teams, and it will show you their location. So for example, if you're like, I know for a fact that I uploaded this file to Teams, but you're like, I have no idea what channel it was in, or I don't even remember the team necessarily or where it's uploaded, you can come here and you can see all of the files that have been uploaded. Then over here, you can see the location of that specific file. And then you can open it right here click on these three dots, you have option to edit in Teams. It is an Excel uh, file, so I can open it in the browser or in the desktop app or download it or get a link. So lots of options um, there to access the file. And you can also access files from your OneDrive um, storage. So I wanna share with you how the files works within a team. So let me go to my Teams. So at the top of each team or channel, so right now I'm in monthly reports channel of the sales and marketing team, I can go to files right up here. So this is gonna show me all the files that have been uploaded into this specific channel. So I can upload a, um, or I can just simply start a new file. So say I wanna start a new file with a Word document. So once again, it would be opening the online versions of these applications. So it would open Word online. And then um, I can upload, um, upload a file from my desktop. And I can simply literally just drag and drop it into that or I can double click and hit open. I can get a link. Um, and open it within SharePoint. Now, if I go in and click on a specific file, then it provides me with a couple other options. So I can download it, kind of like what I just recently showed you. It's a little bit similar. Uh, move it, copy it, rename it, all kinds of options. So now, one thing I wanted to mention is, you know, say I needed to upload a file, um, into and I wanted to put it in the post because I wanted it to be very visible to everyone you know I just uploaded it so I can upload the file here and if I upload it there it will show up you see how this says sales results overview it'll show up and look like that um, but you don't have to then upload it again into the files tab if you've uploaded it into your post it'll automatically upload into the files tab so that's something to be conscious of and aware of, is that once it's uploaded, it's, it's already in a lot of places within Teams, so you certainly will be able to find it again. It'll be in your Files Team tab. It'll also be over here within the Files, probably recent items, and it will also be in Microsoft Teams. So that's a great feature that Teams has, is you don't have to you know, upload it in a thousand places, which I think is really, really great. Okay, and then next, I wanted to talk to you about Teams meetings. So you can use meetings to talk in real time with a group of individuals, both inside and outside your organization. So once again, Teams is, doesn't have to be used for just your um, specific organization. You can use it with outside customers, um, you know, just outside people in general. It doesn't have to be used just internally, which is really great. Um, so to navigate to the meetings, you're gonna click on the calendar in the left toolbar. So this is another change that recently happened, um, maybe a few months back, but basically, the calendar icon used to be called meetings and they have changed it to calendar. So it does give you a more comprehensive view of your entire calendar, which is a cool feature to have and keeps you organized. A couple things that you can do with meetings. So it has a lot of great features which are included, such as audio, video, and sharing capabilities. It has scheduling assistance, so you are able to see if the individuals you're asking to join your meeting are actually free uh, during that time. You can set reoccurring meetings, 
you can set meetings specifically within channels for that whole team or whole group of people. You can add meetings, um, I'm sorry, add details for the meeting, such as an agenda maybe. You can also chat with participants or share content before the meeting as well. If you wanted to potentially upload a few files or you know, go over some specifics before you got into the meeting. Okay, so once again, it is under calendar over here on our left. So this used to be um, called meetings and it no longer is. So now I wanna show you how to go about making a meeting. You can click add meeting, or you can actually just click on the calendar and it will open it up. You can also change this to be that day or the entire week as well. And this will show you your entire calendar uh, because it is linked to your Outlook. So that is a, a great feature. So if I just click right here, it'll automatically open up as if I wanna create a meeting. I don't necessarily have to click up here to hit add new meeting. So my meeting, okay, let's just say demo. I can select a channel to meet in. So here it's showing me my three different teams and then I can hit the down arrow and then I can select the channel. So I want this channel to be in monthly report. I mean, this meeting to take place in the monthly reports channel with that group of people. Then I can invite specific people to it. So um, let's see add a few people and what you can see is it's doing is it's using the scheduling assistant it's actually letting me know right here that these individuals are free for the meeting so I already know that they're free which is good and then it can you can break it down to uh, to see their availability as well if you do that if you click on scheduling assistant you can also say repeat so I can pick when I would like to repeat this meeting. So it's, it's just like Outlook in that sense, very easy to work with. You know, maybe I wanna do it every, um, every third Wednesday, um, start time, finish time, et cetera. So, and it also will show the time zone as well. And then I can type any details I want. So we will be going over monthly, um, status report. Okay, so now I will hit schedule. Okay, so what it did here is it scheduled the meeting and it posted within that specific team channel. So as you can hear, see here, we'll be going over the monthly status report. This is a really neat feature because now, if I need to chat with someone beforehand, so maybe Christine's in the meeting, I wanna put Christine here and say, let's go over details before the meeting, uh, if I can spell details correctly. This gives you an opportunity to talk with people to maybe prep for the meeting a little bit. You could also attach files, say, you know, this is the file that we want, I wanna be going over in the meeting, please make adjustments to the file before the meeting. This is a great way to talk and organize yourselves prior to the meeting, especially if it's a meeting with, you know, external individuals, you wanna make sure you're ready. That's a great tool to have. If we go back to calendar, I do just want to show you that, you know, it did upload here um, at 2.30. So it is on my calendar. It should be on everyone's calendar that I included as well. So once again, another great feature. So what we've done is gone over chat, teams, and calendar, um, and files. So there is lots of different things you can do. As you can see, it's kind of all in one place. Up top is also activity, so you can just see the activity feed of what's been going on. If you, you know, knew that you did something yesterday, we're trying to remember what that thing was that you did to finish it up today, you can go to your feed and see kind of what went on yesterday. There's nothing here to show really, but you know, that's a great uh, tool to use as well. So let's jump back into our presentation. 
So an, a couple of things that I think are really good to remember are to make sure that you're using those posts to organize your conversations. So once again, posts used to be called conversations. So remember that you can reply to the same posts just to keep the conversations on a particular topic in one place. That way it's not all spread out so you, you know, everyone in the team kind of gets lost. Definitely take advantage of the Teams meeting feature. So it's a great way that you can not only share your screen, but you can meet face to face, or you can just simply have a call and you can do it right then. You know, I just showed you about the scheduling feature and how you can schedule in advance. But if you're talking to someone, don't be afraid to use that meet now feature to, you know, talk in real time with somebody. Uh, you can collaborate using the Office online applications. So you can edit and collaborate on files as a team together. So once again, the great thing about that is everyone's always going to be using um, the most up-to-date version of whatever file that is. As in, if you're sending it back and forth in Outlook, sometimes it can get lost and you might be opening an old, um, an old document as opposed to the latest document. So Teams is a great way to just keep everything up-to-date, have everybody included, and everyone just know what's going on. So that's another really, really good feature. So Planet Technologies has a YouTube channel uh, that has samples of our tips and tricks sessions as well as other webcasts. So make sure you prescribe to our channel to get updates on new videos. Evolve 365 Tips and Tricks webcast is available to all of our Evolve 365 customers. Our tips and tricks videos are slowly being added to your portal, so you can look for the tips and tricks subject under all products. So typically we upload all the tips and tricks we have done during the month at the end of the month. So keep that in mind because if you do try to access this tips and tricks section tomorrow, it wouldn't necessarily be available till the end of the month. But um, Evolve 365 has over 215 videos on Microsoft Teams, and we're constantly keeping those updated. So like I said today, you know, there was already an update that just happened just a few days ago. So you can find these videos on your dedicated Evolve 365 site under the Office 365 subject. So it can be really easy to find because all you have to do is click on Office 365, and you'll get a list of all the, um, tips that are available and you just have to find Microsoft Teams on it and we will have access to all those applicable videos. So I hope this overview on Teams was informative and helpful for you. Thank you for everyone who joined today and have a great day.